Hi stamping fans, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today I'm going to share a little fun foiling with you. I'm going to be playing with my Gemini foil and I'm going to create this blue card with this lovely foiled ornament on the front of it and this is from Spellbinders and so this kit contains the ornament and two sentiments that you can foil and then the rest of the images that you see there are die cuts and they create the flower and the leaves that are off on the left hand side there. When you receive your floral pass, you're also going to get a few different things in the kit, including a little bit of this lovely glimmer paper. And I just wanted to point out that there are two of them. One's made by Spellbinder, and the other one is made by Crafter's Companion. They are interchangeable into both the machines. They work on either one, so it doesn't matter which machine you have, they will work. So this is the foil press machine, and there's a little docking bay here. This is the base station at the bottom, and then the foiling platform pulls out. You'll see that I just turned the button on on the right, top right-hand side there. And then in the booklet that comes, you get a material matrix, and it shows you, depending on which die you're using, how long you want to heat this little guy up. And so the button, the large button on the left-hand side is the heat, and so I'm turning that on right now and it's going to be on the lowest setting and then the button that I'm clicking right now is the time and I'm taking it up to 15 seconds because that's what it told me I needed to heat this plate up. So the plate is sitting on top of my base station and I am also getting my Gemini Junior die cutting machine ready because that presses the foil into the paper and helps it to stay there permanently. So that's the second step of the process. So you need to cut a piece of foil that is a little bit bigger than the ornament that you've got warming up on the heat plate. And you also need to have a piece of cardstock that is bigger because the two of them all make the sandwich that we're going to put through the die cutting machine. So you need to prep a little bit ahead of time before you start heating things up. In the kit, you're also going to get a cooling mat. That's this pink thing I'm showing you right now. Some tweezers and some little thumb holders. Um, I don't find this too hot to touch with my bare hands. Some people do, so that's what those are for, for picking up the hot plate and running it through the um, die cutting machine. And so when you have all these pieces and you're all ready to go, I, oh, and you also want the um, top plate. So when you're ready and you have all your pieces, you're going to push the little button on the top right hand side and the timer is going to start counting down and that's when it's going to be heated. So here I go, I just press the timer. I'm doing this all in real time, I'm not speeding this up so that you can see the process from start to finish. Put the top plate over because it helps to hold the heat around the ornament and I'm waiting for it and it does have a very large loud beep at the end when it's ready which scares the heck out of my dogs. So if you have dogs, just a heads up on that. So then you place the foil good side down you place the paper on top, you put the cover plate back on top of that, and then you're going to de-dock. You're going to pull it back, and I put my thumbs firmly on top on either side to hold it in place so it doesn't move, and then you're going to put it into the Gemini Junior, and it's going to run through just like you were die cutting something. So let it work its way through, and you're going to grab it on the other side, and again, use your your thumbs to firmly hold it in place so it's not roaring around all over the place. They do get a little bit slippy. Gently pull that top piece off. Flip your paper over and gently peel back the foil and you have this beautiful foiled image all ready to go. Unfortunately there's no dye for this but it only takes a second or two to cut it out. Okay, so I'm done with that. Now I want to do my sentiments. So I'm using those tweezers to move that hot plate off and I'm bringing in the sentiments and you'll notice I'm lining them up on that base station. There are lines going both ways. There's kind of a grid and so it helps to line them up to keep them straight. And again, a little piece of foil that's a little bit bigger than my sentiment and another piece of cardstock. And I'm starting my countdown and I have this on double time right now. So this is actually a little bit faster than what really happens. But when that beep goes off, you're going to cover 
with the foil face down and add that piece of paper over top, put the cover plate over top of it and run it through. You'll notice on this one when it was heating up I didn't put the cover plate on it. That's because I have a really bad habit of banging those little plates around and then they're not straight anymore. So I've opted for going without and I am finding that it's foiling just fine. So there's my sentiment and it's going to fit perfectly inside my little oval which I'm now going to die cut. So you just place that around. If you happen to like using purple tape when you do your die cutting, remember not to get the purple tape over top of your foil because it will pull it back on you and then you'll have a nice little bald spot where your pretty gold foil used to be. So I'm just running that through and getting that die cut and then I'm going to show you how I die cut the rest of the pieces for the card. I have a quarter sheet of the red and a quarter sheet of the green so it's grass green and cherry red and I'm placing my dies die side cut side up okay there's the leaves I've already covered up the flower and I'm going to put the other piece in there that way I can cut them all at once and so you need to run this through twice to get all the pieces that you need to create this card so I'm only going to show you that I die cut them once you just get the idea when you see how many pieces I've got two of each one so then these pop out quite easily you just need something pokey to get in there and get it started and start them up and there you go we've got all the pieces that we need okay so two of everything I'm using a white card base and I think this is um, what was this this is Nina solar white 110 pound I'm going to use some distress oxides and the colors that I'm using is tumbled glass mermaid lagoon and blue print sketch and I'm using the blending brushes and those are on sale for 50% off if you live in Canada at scrap and stamp today and I'm starting with the lightest color and I'm blending it into the center and then I'm going to come along with the medium color go around the edge and I'm not worrying too much about making sure that it's really good and even because there's a darker color coming for the border on top plus I'm going to be doing some paint splatter over top and so it doesn't need to be perfect I guess is what I'm telling you because you've got that great big beautiful ornament that's going to be over top of the main part of the center as well so here's this darkest color blue print sketch and I'm just adding that out to the edge and then I'm going to take one last go round with the lightest color, the tumbled glass, just to blend that center in a little bit more. And then I am going to heat set this with a heat tool to make sure that it's good and dry before I do my paint splatter. So put a little bit of acrylic paint onto a acrylic handle. And then I'm just going to spritz a little bit of water onto it and it wasn't this paint is really thick so I needed a little bit more and then I'm going to splatter the entire front of my card and again let that dry or use your heat tool to let it dry this adds a nice little bit of background noise behind your ornament and so I'm using foam squares and I'm attaching that and then foam squares again for the sentiment in the center glue dots to put the two flower pieces together this is such a pretty poinsettia have a look on my blog at the close-up of these the details in the leaves and the poinsettia in particular are really fabulous these are awesome dyes and so I'm using uh, white glue because it doesn't attach immediately so if you need to wiggle something around you have probably about 10-15 seconds in order to do that and I like that when I'm designing something like this it's kind of like uh, you know doing a floral arrangement you need to be able to move things a little bit and so tuck everything in where you want it add all your pieces and then I'm going to be using some uh, they're from Spellbinders and they're little gold pearls and I put three of those into the center of the poinsettia and I just use three small ones. If you don't have any gold colored ones, use a Copic marker and color some white ones in a maybe a nice pale yellow. And then I'm using some gold sequins just to add a little bit more embellishment to the background and it blends with my pretty ornament. So here they are close up. All the supplies that I use today are listed underneath the video and there's also a link to my blog where you can get more details and I hope you enjoyed this little project and give foiling a try. By the way, the Gemini die cutting machine is on sale this weekend or today at Scrap and Stamp for $150 off. That's a pretty good deal. So until next time, happy stamping!